We are glad to know you're still watching NTV Weekend Edition tonight. Now, yesterday, the Supreme Court uh, ruled against the Bank of Uganda effectively, uh, asking the regulator to return all seized assets to Crane Bank, edi ending a six-year court battle. Now, tonight, we want to better understand the implication of this ruling on the banking sector, and we are pleased to have Francis Mahira, who is an economist from Makere University, to weigh in on the matter and to help respond to some of those questions that we have been seeing on our social media. Media. Very good evening and welcome to NTV Weekend Edition. Good evening, good evening, dear viewers. Good to be here. Now, when you look at the court ruling, what does this court victory mean for all the victors in the case? Uh, actually, I take yesterday to be, you know, a very bad day for the taxpayers. You know, mm. you and I and every taxpayer in this country. You know, it was a very, be very bad day for us. And, um, you know, this indicates a bigger problem or challenge we have in this country. You know, you have, uh, you know, institutions you know, which are full of inefficiencies and, you know, at the end of the day who pays the cost, it is actually the taxpayer. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you as of February 2016, you know, you had over, you know, uh, seven banks which were closed in the same, in, in the same manner, you know, uh, without using the right law. Uh, and um, the shareholders and the owners of these banks actually had money for over five trillion shillings, you know, in, in form of, you know, compensation. And here we are. So the challenge is that you know, these mistakes keep on, you know, coming on board and, you know, there's no one to, you know, to, to take the responsibility or be held accountable. And at the end of the day, the taxpayer keeps on paying, you know, uh, uh, you know, this cost. So, but um, when you look at this specific of, you know, Crane Bank, you know, uh, ba the, the central bank of the regulator took over it, you know, uh, in 2016. Mm -hmm. And um, they are proper channels how it was supposed to be, you know, done. For example, there's what we call open bank resolution, where uh, the bank can remain under ownership and control of the owners, but when the regulator is, you know, monitoring, uh, that is column A, or where the central bank takes control of, the, of this bank and under a statutory uh, management, and under this, the central bank has powers to put everything in order, let's say hiring new human resource, you know, uh, recapitalizing it. But we saw the central bank hurrying, you know, sell this uh, crane bank. So just in the space of one year, the central bank sold uh, crane bank to the FCU. So that's where the challenge is. If it had taken some time, you know, it would have maybe solved those issues. And then the other thing you need to ask yourself is, how come that the crane bank was doing well one year before, and then from nowhere it says, you know, it's, it's filing for bankruptcy? That is also another thing one needs to look at. You know, um, because of the inefficiencies we have in these government institutions, someone can easily take advantage, you know, of what is happening. And that's why we saw the same thing in 1998 and 1999, over four banks were closed in the same situation. You have International Credit Bank, uh, Trust Bank, Green Bank, and the Cooperative Bank. And the National Bank, all of them, Actually, now I, I'm sure they are motivated they are also to come back and you know, ask for compensation. Well, you seem to have also touched on, on the aspect that most of our people on our social media platforms have been talking about, the fact that mm -hmm. taxpayers are the ones that are going to suffer the most. Yes. So uh, I think that has been answered for you. But again, we would like to know what impact this court ruling will have on uh, the future of the regulator to s maybe shut down or deal with any commercial bank that may have issues here and there. Will it affect the way it, it operates in a way? Um, mm. under, normal con under normal conditions, you know, uh, the central bank would learn, you know, from these experiences. But we've had the it's same in the, the past. The Unless it's, it seems... Has it lost its credibility in a way? Absolutely. Because we've been having the same cases. However, this is something actually the central bank should take serious, you know, or everyone. I mean, you know, should take it serious because it has, you know, a future and long-term implications. For example, beside the cost that is going to be paid by the taxpayer, you know, we have other implications like, you know, the entire financial system. You know, when, you know, friend direct investors are looking at what is happening, you know, you have, you know, f a, a commercial banks with the central bank, you know, in quotes for over five years. This deters you know, other foreign direct investors come and invest in our financial sector. Already we have a very small financial sector. It's why one of the reasons why actually interest rate remains high. And we are already doing, you know, the rate is not doing the job right. And this will deter even other financial, uh, you know, investors, especially offshore, to come and invest here.
Another question uh, that we have observed from uh, social media, of course, being, uh, you, uh, uh, with the uh, taxpayer issue coming in, DFC coming in, and Crane Bank, mm -hmm. is there hope that we are likely to see uh, Crane Bank as we used to know it before? Mm -hmm. Do you think from where you sit? Well, according to the, according to the judging yesterday, they said actually it is going to take, you know, with immediate effect. So definitely we're going to see, uh, you know, a Crane Bank coming back on board. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And for the banks that were closed in the similar manner, if we are to remember banks like, say, Cooperative Bank, Greenland Bank, uh, that were closed in the, the same manner, does this give them hope that maybe they'll also win in this similar manner? In fact, they have been, you know, demanding their compensation uh, through Kosase. And, you know, with this court ruling, I'm sure it has motivated them. You're likely to see them. They may not come back as, you know, banks again, but they are going to ask for compensation. And... Um, the other thing, when you look at all the way all these seven banks have been closed, you know, you know, being done out of the law, you know, how can you sell a commercial bank through a phone call? You know, they are proper channels. But, you know, uh, the, the, the problem is that it is the taxpayer, a common Uganda, mm -hmm. that is actually, you I'll know, facing this cost. In, in, in a second, how do the taxpayer, because this is something that keeps on uh, recurring mm -hmm. in your conversation, how do we prepare moving ahead? How do we deal with this situation? Well, uh, vote right. Mm. Do not vote for handouts, vote for ideas. Otherwise, it is the upside, you know, public choice mechanism that has led all these problems. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Francis Mahira, an economist from Macquarie University.